Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. Today we will continue to talk about linkage disequilibrium. Before we start, however, I want to thank you for the 500 subscribers or the over 500 subscribers on the Genomics Bootcamp channel. It seems that there is a continued and ever increasing interest about the contents of the channel, which is of course a very good news for me and a good motivation to move forward. Of course, if you are not subscribed yet, you can use this opportunity to do so. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And without further delay, let's move on to further discussions about linkage disequilibrium. So let's start with a little bit of activation of our prior knowledge, namely that single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs exist. And these are actually the main marker types we speak about on this channel. Linkage disequilibrium as such also exists. And we spoke about this in the previous video. And in short, it ac actually measures the non-random associations between SNPs. And there is a wide ranging applications for LD in genomics. But for today's question, how to measure linkage disequilibrium? We saw this graph in the previous video. And basically what we see is that some of the allele combinations are appearing much more frequently than others, thus leading to linkage disequilibrium. These non-random association between sort of alleles of a different loci can be visualized in such a two by two table, where we have on one side locus A and with the alleles capital A and small a, and uh, on the top side locus B with alleles capital B and small b. Each of the combinations is then represented with a proportion. So basically the P capital A capital B is the proportion of the combinations for these alleles. If we are interested, for example, in the total proportion of the allele A, then we have it in the right side. The same we can tell about the proportion of all the other alleles. So, so the, uh, the lowercase a, the capital B and the lowercase b. There is one rule if we are talking about biallelic systems that the sum of the proportion of the two alleles sums up to one. In case of linkage equilibrium, when the loci A and B are not linked, we can actually compute the genotype proportions based on the allele proportions. This is shown, for example, in the first line. And we can actually do the same for all the other genotypes. One additional comment here. So we use this feature of this previous two by two table. So I told you that basically the proportions for the two alleles are summing up to one. So basically the P lowercase b, we can also express as one minus P capital B. This is of course a preferred setting because we reduce the number of unknowns from four to two. So basically we just have to work with two variables, P A and P B. Now this situation is valid for the linkage equilibrium, as I mentioned, so when the alleles are unconnected. In case of linkage disequilibrium, however, these equations does not hold true. In other words, from the proportions of the alleles, we cannot compute the proportion of the genotypes. We cannot compute this because there is a difference between these two metrics, that is the disequilibrium coefficient or capital D, and it can be computed as the proportion of the AB together minus the proportion of A time proportion of B. And when we include this disequilibrium coefficient to the equations as before, we get the proportions of the genotypes. So in other words, this D or the disequilibrium coefficient is a measure of the linkage disequilibrium or a coefficient that can be used to express it. But we have a bit of a problem with this disequilibrium coefficient because it's a bit hard to interpret and the sign is arbitrary. So it's depending on which allele actually you consider first. Of course, there is a common convention to set the capital A and capital B to be the most common allele and the lowercase a and b to be the rare allele. But of course, the rarity of the alleles or the minor allele frequencies can change from population to population, even within the same species. So that is not such a big win after all. Now there is a better version of this D or the disequilibrium coefficient called the D prime. That is a scaled version that is computed as shown in this slide. So basically it's divided by the minimum of these two values in case the disequilibrium coefficient is lower than zero or the minimum of these two values 
if the disequilibrium coefficient is higher than zero. Now we end up with a coefficient, which is another, a more popular version of the linkage disequilibrium and ranges between minus one and plus one. Extreme values in this case imply that at least of one of the haplotype was not observed. It has several advantages, that is the d prime one or minus one means that the two SNPs are not separated by recombination so that they are in a complete LD. It also means that if the allele frequencies of the two loci are re relatively similar, then the high D prime means that the markers are good surrogates for each other. But in this case, we have also some disadvantages, namely that the D prime estimates are inflated in case the sample size is small, and the D prime estimates might be also inflated when one of the alleles is rare. Then there is a follow-up question if there is a more intuitive way to measure linkage disequilibrium, which, to which the answer is yes, and that it can be measured straight with the correlation coefficient or an adapted value anyway. This correlation coefficient, as we would expect, expresses the mutual relationship between the alleles of the two loci. Now a little bit of refreshment on the correlation. So this is the correlation as we know it from the statistics. So it has a standardized abbreviation of lowercase r and ranges from minus one to plus one. Basically there could be a different values for the correlation coefficient which describe how the two variables behave in relation to each other. So basically we have an x and a y and if with the increasing x, the y decreases, then we have a negative correlation coefficient. And if the two values are increasing, so with the increasing x also y increases, then we have a positive correlation coefficient. In between minus one and one, so the extreme values, so the correlation coefficient expresses the strength of such relationships. And of course, it could be situations when the two values are not correlated, so then it's the correlation coefficient is zero. Now for linkage disequilibrium, we use the squared correlation coefficient. So this is the R square. So the squared correlation between the markers and therefore it ranges between zero and one. R square of one implies that the markers provide exactly the same information and the R square of zero implies that, that the two markers are not connected at all, so independent from each other. So in other words, the R square measures a loss of efficiency when a marker A is replaced with the marker B. Now the R square value could be computed from the allele frequencies themselves. And what we need is actually just three values from here, the joint appearance of A and B, the proportion of capital A and the proportion of capital B. Based on these values, we can put them into this very nice equation and we can compute the correlation coefficient R square. Now I realize that there is quite a jump from the correlation itself to this equation. And I provide actually all the details in an additional video, which I call the advanced or a quotation mark advanced video. So you can look at it if you're interested. It is already uploaded on the Genomics Bootcamp channel. And once we have our measure of linkage disequilibrium, of course, we can compute the pairwise linkage disequilibria between markers, such it was done in Cambari et al. 2010 for this example. So in here, what we have in on the y-axis is the linkage disequilibrium measured in R square. In the x-axis, there is a distance between the markers, in this case measured in Morgans, which can be of course translated to megabases. So this would be one megabase, two megabase difference, three, four, and five megabase difference. Each dot on this graph is a linkage disequilibrium value for a marker pair. So you see that if the two alleles are very close to each other, then the linkage disequilibrium could be very high up to one, but then this value quickly goes down to a lower values as the differences between the markers or the, the genomic distances between the markers increase. This sudden decrease of the average linkage disequilibrium between markers is shown with this dashed line. And in fact, its shape is very typical for all the organisms. 
We refer to this sudden decrease as linkage disequilibrium decay. The shape of this LD decay is in general similar between the organisms, but the starting values and the further developments can be different when it comes to different species, or in this case, as shown in Perez O'Brien 2014, it could be different even when we consider Bos taurus and Bos indicus breeds. This, of course, has some relevance when the LD is used for further genomic analysis, as discussed in the last video. So to summarize this video, the LD characterizes the degree of relationships between the nearby loci. There are various methods and possibilities to measure it. One of them is the disequilibrium coefficient denoted by D or as the D prime. That is a metric to use to quantify the LD, but it has some disadvantages. And then the other more commonly used metric is the R square or the squared correlation coefficient that is a robust measure of the LD. So this is the end of this video. If you're interested how we arrive to the equation to compute the R square, then be sure to check out the next one, a follow up to this. And if you say that is enough for today, then of course, I thank you for your time and wish you a very nice continuation of the day.